Welcome everyone to the week two of um, Rewild and Maximize Life webinar series. Uh, if you missed us last week, you know you can go catch that replay over at uh, rewildyourhealth.com slash replay. And uh, that last week we actually talked about how uh, to identify what your diet is, how to really focus on what key points there are in your diet that you want to change. And this week, we're actually going to focus on how your food uh, really affects your diet, you know, what kind of diet is ideal. So this is more of an educational um, webinar. And again, you know, thank you for joining me here. You know, I really appreciate the the support and thanks to CrossFit Stanton for hosting me. Um, don't forget that this is week two out of a seven week webinar series. So please check back every Saturday at two. We're gonna have another webinar about a different topic and it's all about the cheat sheet that you should have gotten from me. So I'm gonna go ahead, and jump right in and uh, we're going to explore this week, week two. You know, it's about what you should eat. And okay, so this week it's it's week two of Rewild and Maximize Life, and thank you again for joining me. It's brought to you by Rewild Your Health. So CrossFit Stanton again is a uh, uh, a backer. Of this webinar series, you know they they're hosting us. They're they're definitely some people you should go check out. You know they they don't just care about um, getting results. They they care about you being happy as a as a client and you reaching your own potential. And uh, you can go check them out. Their website is at the bottom. It's www.crossfitstanton.com. You can go check them out on on Facebook and Instagram uh, at CrossFit Stanton. And uh, you should definitely go check them out. Thanks again to these guys for, for hosting me. So the uh, seven steps to correct, balance, and maximize your nutrition, it's the cheat sheet you should have gotten from me. Today we're going to learn about what's good. Um, and last week we had found out where each of us were. And so you can see the next couple of weeks what we're going to talk about. And uh, you can definitely tune in to one of the weeks that uh, you see – that would be interesting, but if there is um, one suggestion I can make, if you go to all of them, you seriously will learn a ton and you'll be able to um, feel equipped to handle your own health needs. So step number two to correct balance and maximize your nutrition is to learn about what's good. So this is what I say, the, the birthright for every human is to be able to adapt and thrive in any environment. And I have a picture of me here <clears throat> in, a, uh, in a river, you know. I, uh, I do like swimming. But, all right, before we continue, I definitely want to make sure that you have your downloads. So I've mentioned it a couple times. These are the, these are the two downloads. The one on the left is what we're going through. So um, the first download is from me. It's the seven steps to correct balance and maximize your nutrition. It is my cheat sheet for you to get the health that you want and the knowledge to uh, reach your nutrition goals. So this really touches on how to take health into your own hands. And, you know, that's where my focus is. I want you to be empowered to do it. And you and all your friends, you know, anybody can get a free copy, totally free copy of this by texting the word rewild to 44222. So uh, if you like it, you know, make sure you tell your friends and uh, everybody else who's interested to, uh, to just text rewild to 44222 and you can get a free copy of this. The second one is actually from Briar Kalia. It's Rewild Your Diet, 13 Ancestral Nutrition Tips. Now, this is Briar's guide to having great nutrition, and it's very similar to this webinar. She goes much more in-depth on certain topics, and, uh, you know, she's very thorough with, with her whole thing. So if, uh, if you want to get a copy of that right, right below this webcast, um, there should be a large button. All you have to do is click the button and you'll get a copy of hers and uh, you definitely need to check that out too. 
All right, so <clears throat> you are in the right place. If you love learning about health and, nu and nutrition, you know, uh, I think that everybody loves doing that, right? You know, and joking. Um, but if you have actually struggled to be healthy in the past, you know, if you've been overweight, if you've been sick, if you've been unhappy, you're in the right place. And if you have a loved one who is unhealthy, you aren't sure where to start looking or you know what to do for them, you're just trying to gather information, you are in the right place. And I will definitely be able to help you with that. So what you will learn today, you'll learn how we evolved, how we evolved as a species. Um, you'll also learn what this means for our health, what our evolution does with our health, and what our health does with our evolution. And also what kinds of foods we should be eating. But all in all, you will learn today how to eat. You will start educating yourself on how to eat. So I, I do want you to uh, ask me questions and, and use this hashtag to uh, keep the conversation going. You can discuss your views with others. It's just hashtag rewild your health. Um, you know, definitely uh, be checking me out. And uh, if, you, if you have any questions anytime, it doesn't even have to be about this. Uh, particular webcast. If you have any kind of health questions, just uh, use this hashtag and uh, you know shout them out at me. So here's my Twitter handle. It's at Krunksven. But I'm going to tell you a little bit about me. As I mentioned last week, I was going to go over my story a little bit more today. So um, I want you to know about me, my struggles, where I've been, you know, my whole history, and uh, that way maybe it'll give you a little bit of uh, perspective on how to handle your own life. So <clears throat> here's a couple pictures of me. Um, you know, I'm up to snow, or up to my knees in snow in the picture on the left. Here's my daughter on the top right there. And there's my wife. She's the um, person who's actually donating the uh, other free ebook that I, t that I gave you today, the, um, the uh, Rewild Your Diet uh, ebook. So, what, who am I? Okay, I am the creator of a couple different companies. So one of the companies that I, uh, you know, really am, um, I guess it's inspired by me, my nutrition that I'm really focusing on is Rewild Your Health. You know, I also have the Human Atavis podcast, which you can check out on iTunes. And uh, I've got a supplement company called Vitality Health Products. So I have studied nutrition for years. To be able to get to where I'm at, I've studied nutrition for years. I have to truly be able to uh, dissect everything that um, I've learned. And uh, it's taken me years, years and years. Okay, so here, here's a picture of me studying nutrition in the river. You know, I'm eating something. I don't even know what it was. But uh, so what, what I do is I decipher tons of information. I love, I love learning about health and nutrition and fitness and alternative health, all that kind of stuff. I love learning about it. You know, it's what I talk about in my free time. It's what I think about at night when I can't sleep. So <clears throat> all the, the different ways that I get information, you know, podcasts, blogs, books, conferences, online conferences, courses, online courses, seminars, coaching, documentaries, like everything. I, I do everything to learn about health. If there's something new that comes out, I've got to read it. I've got to watch it. And I've got to get my hands on it. And uh, these are the, a couple of the people that I follow that you all should definitely check out. On the top left is Daniel Vitalis. He is the leader of the Rewild movement. You know, he really talks about how to uh, get yourself healthy. Um, top right here is Ben Greenfield. You know, he's uh, he's definitely someone in the fitness and and you know scientific nutrition studied world that uh, he he knows a lot and he also believes in all of this stuff. You know, all of these people are aligned. And the bottom is Sean Stevenson. Uh, He's the head of the Model Health Show. And, you know, again, all of these people uh, talk about the, sim the same kind of stuff that I talk about. And you would think it's common knowledge, but it's not. So my goal is to distill this information for you. Um, when I, all right, I've always been overweight. When I was really young, uh, even as a kid, I was overweight. Um, I remember, you know, my family really equated food with love. So... Uh, that means if I got a lot of love, I got a lot of food. And uh, like at my heaviest, you know, this is in high school, um, I weighed 260 pounds. You know, that was the, the most I've ever weighed. This picture 
here on the right is a picture of me. Um, I'm not quite at the 260 there, but still pretty heavy. And, you know, I just, I ate whatever I wanted. And I was always told it was because of my genes. And, and that's, that's felt like a cop out, I guess. I never really liked that answer. Um, and I don't think you should settle for a reason like that, you know, saying that it's because of your genes and you just got dealt a bad hand, you know, you, you never really have a chance, you know, that's the same kind of stuff that people always told me. And I never liked that. I never liked that idea. And, uh, we're going to actually talk about why you shouldn't accept this idea, why this isn't true. So I tried every diet and nothing worked. You know, here's another picture of me. Uh, I was in a band, so it was me playing guitar. Um, got an X in my hand, so I'm under 21. But yeah, I was just overweight. And I, I was, you know, I really tried. When I was in high school, I worked out every day. You know, I did track and football. I even did cross country, but I was always overweight. And uh, I never really knew why, you know. So I tried different diets. I remember the first one that I really tried when I started thinking, you know, hey, maybe it is my diet that causes me to uh, always be overweight because it's something I never really addressed. I remember Oprah was having a week, it was like, you know, be vegan for a week or something like that. And so I was like, I'll try that. You know, this might be the first um, step into learning about nutrition and how to, how to make myself lose weight, you know, really is what I was thinking. Uh, one of the bands I had just gotten into at that time, it was between the bear to me, they're all vegan. So I was like, I'll do it. I'll try it. And, uh, it didn't work for me. You know, I went through all of these diets, paleo, vegetarian diet, zone diet, raw, you know, raw vegan, um, weight watchers, slow carb juicing, you know, I did everything. Um, uh, it, it was, I guess the real critical point that changed everything was the birth of my daughter. So you know, my, uh, my wife and I, we really wanted to know what was the right diet, you know, what was the right foods we should eat that she should be eating when she was pregnant, you know, what was the best. We wanted our daughter to have the best nutrition that we could get her. And uh, we seriously, we could not find any reliable sources. It's like you look something up on the internet, one person says one thing, another person says the opposite. And it's really conflicting and really confusing. You know, I just, I really spun my wheels a lot. And, uh, you know, that was in the very beginning of my journey. And it was so confusing. I totally understand. You know, I'm in that, uh, I was definitely in that boat. And I stayed in that boat until I found Dr. Weston A. Price. Now, he was a little different. He was a dentist and an anthropologist um, in the early 20s. He had a practice where, uh, you know, he was a dentist, so he was treating people's teeth. And he he was wondering why his patients had such bad problems, had such bad teeth problems, you know, uh, root canals, cavities, you know, all, all the kinds of problems that people have nowadays. So what he wanted to do is he wanted to find out why, you know, one of those people that doesn't just accept the status quo. And uh, so what he did is he went to find the people with the best teeth in the world. And so, um, you know, this also happened to be the healthiest people in the world. Uh, I don't know if he realized it at the time. He definitely did afterwards that the a person's teeth are actually indicative of the health that they are in because your teeth provide an insight to your bones and provide an insight to how your organs are functioning. You know, I don't know. I don't really think he realized it before, but afterwards he definitely realized it. So, huh, let me think. Who did he find? <laughs> so... He went and studied hunter-gatherers, definitely. <clears throat> and he also um, went and studied traditionalists. You know, when he was trying to find these people all around the world, you know, he had to end up going to small villages, and they were places that weren't modernized, that did not have modern food. So why were these people healthy? It was because they ate a diet close to what they evolved eating. It wasn't that they were eating the modern diet. You know, this was when flour was big and... and uh, you know, it's it's strange to to really think about that we've gotten today, you know, eating donuts and, you know, eating ice cream all the time, that we actually evolved to eat a different diet. And these foods are made convenient for us because they're easy to produce. But 
these people didn't eat that kind of stuff. They lived off the land. You know, they, they grew all the food themselves. They, they captured it, hunted and gathered, you know, they lived to their fullest potential. And when you eat a diet like this, you know, you will live to your fullest potential. So humans will be healthy if they live in their natural environment, you know, that's kind of strange. So if you feel like you're not healthy, you know, it's probably because you're in the, in the wrong environment, your body evolved to be out in nature. And now we're being forced to have it in cubicles. You know, we're forced to eat processed food under artificial lights, you know, in our own closed off environments, you know, we're not living to our fullest potential because we're not living in our natural environment, the environment that we evolved to be in. So, what kind of stuff were they eating? You know, they were foraging wild local plants, hunting wild game. You know, they fished a lot. I've got a picture here of some mongongo nuts. That's uh, one of the staples of the, I believe it's the Kong people. And uh, they, they travel, you know, long distances to get these mongongo nuts. And it, it's difficult. They forage the local plants. So... They also eat fermented foods, you know, insects. It was something that's overlooked a lot. You know, it's starting to come and, you know, people are mentioning crickets and stuff like that more nowadays, but uh, salt was also something they ate a lot of. And every society made sure they had lots of salt. So I want to take a moment and break down a few of these people that he actually studied in this book. So he uh, he went and studied, it was like 12... Or, or 14 different societies, and it was both um, modern and non-modern people in all of these societies. So when he would go visit people, uh, say like the South, Amer South Americans, he, would, he went and visited the Colombians, and uh, he studied, well, of course, he also studied the pre-Columbian uh, nutrition, and then he studied the... Colombians who were hunter-gatherers who farmed and uh, got their own food by themselves without the help of modern civilization. And then he also studied the people who had the same genetics, who were from that same area, who actually became modernized, started eating modern foods. And so he found that the people who ate the modern foods, even if they had wild genes, you know, even if they were children of people who ate the diets that were off the land, they were unhealthy too. So the first one I want to talk about, I'm going to talk about a couple here, is the Swiss. And uh, so he was a dentist. He took a picture of their teeth. You see all their teeth are straight. All these kids, um, they've got really wide faces, which is uh, really why their teeth are straight. You know, um, when you're um, a, a baby and you're being formed, you know, especially in utero, if you don't have enough nutrients available, your body starts allocating nutrients to where they should go. And the, one, of the, one of the places it really pulls nutrients from is the, uh, the cheekbones and across the, the nose. So people who have narrow faces tend to have crowded teeth. And these people had great teeth because they had really broad faces. They have wide nostrils, you know. Um, he, he mentioned that the Swiss actually, they did not brush their teeth. And some of them even had green slime on their teeth. But uh, they still had really healthy teeth. They... they uh, only had an instance of cavities at about 1%, which is very, very low. Um, he, uh, so, uh, I mean, that's also saying that it's not toothbrushing that causes your teeth to be healthy. It is the diet that you eat. You can brush your teeth and have a bad diet and still get cavities. Um, you can eat a good diet and not brush your teeth and you won't get cavities. So the Swiss, what did they eat? They ate lots of butter. Um, they were very northern area. So they ate some vegetables, you know, mainly during the summer, they had lots of vegetables and the vegetables that they kept, they fermented. So they had lots of fermented foods, you know, they even had, they, they were uh, an agricultural society. So they ate a lot of milk products that came from uh, like cows and goats and that kind of stuff. Um, and they actually did not eat very much meat. Um, they, uh, they weren't the hardcore hunter gatherers that you think about. And they, uh, they really focused on the milk products. And this was a, a small area. He could barely get in here. You had to take a, uh, like a donkey on a one-path trail through the mountains to get here. And a lot of actual people in the Swiss Garden in um, the Vatican 
came from this one village because they were so healthy and so vibrant, so vital. Um, the next set of people I want to talk about is the Irish. And uh, what they what they did, they ate lots of seafood and oats. You know, their seafood was the majority of, of seafood and oats. They had some vegetables. It wasn't, you know, too awful big. It was not potatoes. That was later. And, uh, you know, these people really were vibrant. Um, they had, you know, broad faces. Uh, in the last, last picture, one of the women had glasses. And, and yes, you know, occasionally it happens, but the vast majority of people he studied, they didn't have that kind of problem. And it was because of the, the diet that they were eating. They evolved. They lived on an island. They evolved to eat lots of seafood. And oats was really the only kind of, of vegetable that they could grow on the land successfully over and over. They were agricultural people, and uh, that's what they, they could get their hands on. So the last people that I have outlined here were the Native Alaskans. You know, um, they, they again had really broad faces. Uh, I wanted to show you this picture because, you know, you can tell on a lot of them that they have really short teeth. And uh, see, there's a kid in the top right picture there, but everybody else has teeth that are worn down. So these people actually chewed on a lot of bones and in their spare time they had straps of leather leather that they would chew on and they would grind their teeth down to the pulp to uh you know where they didn't have very much tooth left at all but their diet was so good that their teeth actually started to grow again from the pulp and uh, that's why they had such short teeth but their teeth were always growing so what did they eat they ate lots of animal fat they ate lots of organs, you know, a lot of animal products. There were very little vegetables. The, uh, I believe they had access to uh, 50 vegetables that they would eat throughout the year, 50 different species of vegetables, which is actually up from the, the standard American diet only has about 30, um, one of which is iceberg lettuce. That's the only leafy green that people ate. So they also had lots of fermented foods. <clears throat> Again, they were in an ever, like, cold refrigerated area but they fermented a lot of their food um and i wanted to i have this as an aside this was not a ketotic diet a, a ketotic diet it was um the fats that they were eating you know this is usually cited to have lots of fats but they were actually starchy fats um they were fats that had lots of uh carbohydrates inside of them so they um they actually were not in ketosis all that much. You know, again, it would happen when people were fasting. It would happen when um, you didn't have very much food available. You would you know, go into ketosis, but it was just a short-term thing. It was not a long-term thing like it is nowadays. You know, people say that it is a, uh, it can be a long-term diet to, to be fat adapted, but that that may not come without the drawbacks. So I, I did want to say that there was not a, there's not been a ketotic hunter gatherer or agricultural society in the world today. So why is this important? Why is it important to know what they ate? Um, because it applies to us. You know, I, I put this in here because uh, like really about 3 million years ago in our history is where it starts, our history of food starts to become relevant. We, uh, we really started to learn about cooking and <clears throat> there's a hypothesis that we scavenged uh, cooked food first and um, that happened about three million years ago with uh, Australopithecus afarensis and uh, Australopithecus africanus so uh, the uh, the path that we were on you know we were Australopithecus africanus you know became homo habilis which uh, eventually moved into Homo erectus and became Homo sapiens. This is, uh, you know, it, it really applies to us. The diets of these people actually were not truly hunter-gatherers, and he did say that hunter-gatherers had the healthiest diets out of everybody that he visited, but we are modernized people, you know. Uh, I think that maybe we shouldn't overlook that, that we have evolved and that our genes are ever-changing, you know. Um, we have wild genes. We really do. Uh, this is a, a picture of my genes. I actually got a genetic test um, 
you can see uh, what all kinds of genes that I've got in my uh, in my DNA in the circle you know the big light blue that's mainly where I'm from you know that's where most of my genes had come from uh, and it was you know, I, I've got a little bit of Asian and, and Native American genes in me, but I'm mainly European. <clears throat> so these people were domesticated. You know, the question is, what would you feed a human in a zoo? You know, if, uh, or well, how should, how you should eat and what your genes are telling you. That's really the focus of this webinar. You know, it's the same as feeding any other animals. When you put an animal in a zoo, like, what do you feed it? You know, do you feed it what it fed or what it ate in, their, in its environment? Or, uh, you know, does it really matter what you eat? So when you put a chimpanzee in a zoo, are you gonna feed it Twinkies and Hostess cakes? No, you're not. You're gonna feed it a diet of what it would have eaten in its natural habitat. You know, uh, if you put a human in a zoo, what is its natural habitat? That's really the big question. And that's where people get kind of lost. They don't really understand uh, all the aspects of it. And it's not that simple. So, um, you know, humans, of course, have many different diets. And that's what we are going to be discussing in this webinar. I want to talk about epigenetics. You know, here's uh, a little bit about epigenetics. I don't want to get too detailed here, but um, your genes at the very bottom of your genes, make up your DNA. Your DNA makes up your chromosomes, and everybody has, uh, you know, chromosomes that help them decide what they actually, um, what they actually do, how their genes respond. So, it's uh, if you have a gene in your DNA, it means it could be active. It means it might not be active. It depends on your lifestyle. Uh, so there are triggers that can change your genetics. So it has a couple listed at the top, the de your development, you know, in utero and childhood. Of course, that changes your genetics. The environment is uh, a big aspect of your genetics. Your, your genetics can change because of the environment that you're in, because of, of course, the chemicals, what you wear, what you do, how you live. All of that changes your genetics. Um, your diet, aging, and, of course, any kind of drug can change. Um, you know, mutate. mutations are different kinds of uh, genetic transformations that is different, and those are not good. So um, we're not going to get too in-depth in with that, but it is an aspect for everybody to think about. So epigenetics is the study of how genes are affected by your diet. So we, uh, we evolved to eat a certain way. You know, that's kind of a... Um, a broad statement, but if you look at the way that your DNA has been composed, it's because uh, it's really the story of how you evolved. Um, the reason that I got a genetic test was so that I could understand how I evolved, and that way it can, uh, you know, it, it can actually talk about how I should eat being a, uh, a person with uh, these specific genes. That means I came from these specific places, I should eat the specific food. Uh, and, you know, we have evolved since becoming hunter-gatherers. We became hunter-gatherers, you know, way, way back millions of years ago, we were hunter-gatherers. And, uh, you know, a lot of people say that we need to go back to how our genes were before 10,000 years ago. And, you know, the vast majority of our genes are like that. But um, we need to trace our genes to determine what we should eat. So uh, I've got an example coming up here of how... Uh, my genes have changed since becoming a hunter-gatherer. So, you know, guess what? You can control what genes are activated and inactivated. Your genes tell your story, and you can choose to embrace them. We are always evolving. So, and the example that I have here is, should I eat dairy? So, a lot of people would say that I have hunter-gatherer genes. I should not eat dairy. Um, you know, I should eat the the um, diet of, you know, what hunter-gatherers, the healthiest people. Uh, I should eat a diet of what they actually um, would have eaten. And so what happens is in my genetic test, I te one of the tests was for lactose tolerance. So here you can see, if you look at the, uh, the top left above lactose tolerance, um, 
the specific gene that got that I got tested for, it is a CT thirteen nine ten. Um, you know, it shows what the marker is, what the genetic marker is, um, my genotype. So <clears throat> I got a copy, the A copy from both parents and my DNA. So my specific gene is CT thirteen nine ten double A, and what that means is that you know likely I'm I'm not lactose intolerant. So I, my genes have actually evolved, you know, hunter gatherers wouldn't have had this gene when they weren't drinking milk. You, you can digest lactose, which is the uh, sugar found in milk. You can digest that for the first like seven to 10 years of life. And it slowly starts to decrease and tapers off. So then when you're an adult, you can't drink milk anymore. And it's because when you're young, you drink your mother's milk, you know, and uh, you have to digest that because that's your main source of food but you lose that over time. And so my genes adapted from eating dairy. So um, I, I, since I have evolved to eat that way, since that's what my genes are saying, you know, I should include it in my diet. That means that my ancestors were drinking it. That means that my ideal diet more than likely would include milk. You know, I, I do want to say as long as it makes you feel okay. So um, it is possible that these genes may or may not be active. The specific instance of an activated gene or an inactivated gene is determined by your diet, your environment, your childhood, everything. So you got to make sure that you feel okay. But um, if you saw on the last page, it said likely not lactose intolerant. And that's because people with this gene do not express the lactose tolerance in a very high amount at all. So I have a, an example. My wife is in the 5% of Europeans who actually are uh, lactose intolerant. So um, even though her genes were the same as mine, they, uh, they would have evolved to um, actually, <laughs> I guess she got the genes that did not evolve to change this. So she is actually not able to drink milk and uh, it bothers her and, and, and she's noticed the connection. Um, and it all depends on your genes. So I wanted to help you understand a little bit about epigenetics here. You know, uh, when you look at my example, um, I actually can uh, digest saturated fat really well, and I can digest carbohydrates really well. If I combine that with the diet that, or the, um, the geography of my genes, so I can tell like what genes I got from what area of the world, I am mainly, I'm actually mainly, you know, North, North, Western European, and uh, my genes would actually line up with the Irish people. That's why I included them in this presentation. Most people would have come from, you know, an example that I listed there. The Irish would have had a, a large amount of carbohydrates and a large amount of saturated fat, and that uh, that means that I should eat a diet closer to the Irish people. So. <clears throat> You know, there was one specific way that we evolved to seek out food. I wanted to, to change topics here a little bit. Uh, I did include a picture of my favorite berries here. These are wine berries. Um, and had a sweet tooth. So this was one thing I wanted to tell everybody about because um, it's easy to fall into the trap of eating processed foods. And it's because they are sweet. They've got lots of sugars and carbohydrates and your body searches that out. That's not something wrong with you. Um, there is not a lot of sugar seasonally in nature. So there is a very specific time of year that wine berries are available. And that means that I get tons of wine berries, but they're only available for a few weeks. So uh, you seek it out and you gorge when you find it. So I love this picture here. You know, it's a uh, uh, San, a San uh, person actually eating a honeycomb. He's got bees all over him. But he doesn't care because he's eating honey. You know, he, he has seeked this out and he fought to get this and now he's eating and he's going to enjoy it. And, you know, if this sounds like you don't worry because your hunter gatherer genes are showing. So if you have a problem with sweets, you know, and, and it's not necessarily something wrong. Again, it's because that's the way your genes have evolved. That's the way that you evolved to find food because Carbohydrates are, are very dense, you know, and, and they taste really good to us. So whenever you find them, 
you remember them and you start craving them and that's your body telling you, hey, I want more of this. This was good. This was easy to digest. I'd like more of it. But there are a few things that you can do that can, uh, in, that, that can change the way that your body perceives food. So I, I wanted to give you a few things that you can actually do, like tactically do, to uh, prevent your um, sugar habits from growing and uh, how you can slowly ease this back down. So the first thing you should do is eat fermented foods. You know, it's been shown that people who eat fermented foods actually have lower cravings for sugar. And if you actually are thinking about something like, oh my gosh, I want a cupcake. If you eat some sauerkraut, you know, like, and, and wait a few minutes, then um, you start wanting that less. Uh, broth is another example. You know, it's, it's one of those things that if you um, drink it, say, in the mornings, you'll be less likely throughout the day to... Um, try to grab carbs or, or try to grab uh, sugar. Even if you uh, uh, start craving it, you know, it, it's not as strong of a craving and uh, it's easier to control. And then fat is another example. You know, it, it helps you uh, feel fuller and satiated and it helps buffer a little bit more of the um, carbohydrates. So uh, those are three things that you should definitely start including in your diet. If you have bad cravings, if you have problems with that, if you like to eat sweets, you should try to find one of these to uh, put into your diet. So I, there are a couple of th uh, other things here I wanted you to try. Um, of course, eating a nutrient-dense diet, nutrient dense diet, what it does is it, um, it'll actually end your craving. So if you are craving something, like anything, it doesn't have to be sugar, if you're craving something, then it's your body telling you that it wants something. It's probably not getting something that it needs and it's trying to find a source of that so it makes you want what uh, you're missing in your diet and a lot of your cravings are controlled in your gut you know by the the gut bacteria they communicate to your brain through the vagus nerve and uh, what if you eat a nutrient-dense diet it actually will feed your gut bacteria better and then you're able to um, and the cravings. You should allow yourself to eat as much of these foods as you want. If you like ice cream, you should find, you know, a good quality. You know, you can try uh, something like a coconut ice cream or you can, you know, make your own out of raw milk, you know, out of cream. That's, that's going to be way better than what you can get. And you should allow yourself to eat that much. You know, you should allow yourself to fill on it. Um, <clears throat> If you stay on a diet like this for an extended period of time, you know, two weeks, three weeks, a month, then you will not want this other food. If you're eating all of the good food, you're going to be feeling vibrant. You're going to be feeling healthy. You're going to love, like, the way that uh, the body that you want is able to actually become uh, a real-life thing instead of just the picture you have in your head. If you eat a nutrient-dense diet, if you eat the foods that your body is craving, then you can... Uh, then you can uh, fight these cravings. All right, so I'm gonna include one bonus here, and I can't take credit for this. Uh, this was Tony Robbins, and uh, I'm including it here because this is kind of extreme, and uh, I, I actually, to be completely honest, I tried it with ice cream. So I used to really have a bad craving for ice cream all the time, and when I would get stressed, I would want, it, want ice cream, and uh, I really set up those habits so this is the way that I broke the habits. And again, it was from Tony Robbins. So what I did is you eat only that food for three days. You know, it sounds like disgusting. It sounds like I'm telling you the complete opposite of what you should be doing. But, but trust me, you eat only that food for three days. You don't eat or drink anything else, you know. Not even, you know, water. Like, you have to only eat that food. You're going to get completely sick of it. You, you will be... Um, you know, like thinking about it will make you feel sick. If you reprogram your mind to um, have a bad association with this food, you won't want it anymore. So uh, this is something that I would suggest to do with, with uh, one specific thing that you're having problems with. And if something else comes up down the road, you know, like if you really crave a Chili's cheese fries or something like that, then you should just get like a bunch of orders of them and take them home with you and you should just eat them all the time, you know. It sounds like, oh my gosh, that tastes so good, you know. It, it, uh, it's not that glamorous. You will get tired of it and you'll start wanting something else.
and the cheese fries will probably make you really thirsty and you can't drink water. You just have to eat more cheese fries. So uh, you'll get sick of it eventually. And it's a way to reprogram your brain. Um, and it, it worked. Again, it's what I did. And uh, it definitely worked for me. So <clears throat> with all this talk about diets, what is a good diet? You know, I've been kind of beating around the bush of what you should be eating and talking about what hunter-gatherers eat. But what is a good diet? So... Of course, that's what this whole webinar series is about. But I do want to break down a little bit about what a good diet is. So you've got to start with good food. Um, now, a good diet isn't only vegetables, and a good diet isn't only meat. So you need to uh, uh, really find a balance. You know, a good diet is a mixture of both. And it includes other kingdoms of life. And I, I included protists, fungi, and bacteria here. And it always has a variety of the five kingdoms of life. So it includes eating as much local food as possible. And it does not include a cookie cutter version for everybody. It's specifically for you. So if you have a neighbor and, and your neighbor, neighbor raves about how the uh, you know, Adkins diet or the Weight Watchers or the Pritikin diet works for them, and you try it, and it is so difficult. You can't stay on it. You know, it's just like terrible. You hate everything. It's because it's not meant for you. Their body responded better to it, and it's not because you're weak. It's not because you lack willpower. A lot of people associate fat people with a lack of willpower. Well, if they just, you know, were a little stronger, then they wouldn't have all the cravings. They wouldn't be so self-indulgent, but that's, that's not true. You know, you're fighting your genetics, and that is really – an uphill battle. And if you can manage to beat them for a short time, then you will probably gain more weight back in the long term because you're not finding what your body needs. So what you need to do is you need to find the nutrient dense food. You need to find the good quality source food. And it's not something that is specific to each person. Now I will say when, when Weston Price went and studied everybody and uh, all the different cultures, he did find a lot of commonalities. And that is uh, stuff we should take a look at. You know, you should try everything. But I do want to go over what a good diet would look like. So, you know, what what is a good vegetable? Um, a good vegetable includes lots of things. So local vegetables are always better. Um, they will be more nutrient-dense because they've been picked more recently. So when you go to a store and you buy a carrot, it's been dead likely for a week or more, but if you go to a farmer's market, you know, it's even possible they picked it that morning before they came. So you should eat locally. Seasonally, that ensures variety. So if you have a variety of foods in your diet, then it pretty much guarantees you won't be nutrient deficient in anything. Uh, you've got to make sure that you have a big variety, but that's what hunter-gatherers did. They ate seasonally. They would have eaten as the seasons come. So that means that they would have gorged on foods while they had it. Asparagus is available for a few weeks. You know, berries are available for like a month. And they would have gorged on those foods, but they would have been tired of them by the time the season was over, and they'd be glad to move on to the next thing. So organic you know, if you're ever buying at a store, you should buy an organic vegetable. But beyond organic, usually is considered, um, you know, organic certifications are difficult for local farms to get. So what they, they actually do is they have uh, beyond organic food. And that means that it is organic. You know, it's probably even better because it's local and seasonal. So if you ever find vegetables that are beyond organic, then uh, that's definitely better to get, you know, wild food, I would say, is the best. The wild vegetables, and I've got a picture of some wild vegetables here. Um, looks like the asparagus isn't necessarily wild, but there are some fiddleheads and some uh, ramps. And they are going to be much more nutrient dense. If you compare two different, um, like, say, wild lettuce and you know domesticated lettuce like green leaf lettuce or something uh, the wild lettuce is going to be much more nutrient dense it's going to be so hard to eat a lot of that because you're getting so many nutrients in your body and where you could take green leaf lettuce and you know it's like eating nothing you know it's flavorless like iceberg it, it's just it, it's so bread and it doesn't have any more nutrients in it that you can just eat so much of it and not feel full um, and that's why it's important to let yourself gorge on these foods that are um, very nutrient dense because then your body will start wanting them. It's like, oh, this is so much better. Like, why would I want, you know, 
host of snack cakes when I can eat, uh, you know, nutrient dense food. So, uh, you know, heirloom, that just means that it's uh, an older variety of the plant. Um, that means it's probably been less bred. Uh, biodynamic, you know, just non GMO. You get the point. There are lots of, of things people do with vegetables, but if you, uh, the closer you can get to where you live, the more wild you can get, the better. That's why it's better to get local honey than it is to go to the store and get honey. <clears throat> so, what are good animal products? And uh, I found this little chart here and I thought it was interesting because it talked about wild game. So, you know, you definitely want it organic. You want it to be pastured. So, you want to make sure that, you know, it doesn't have hormones added to it. You want to make sure that it was grass fed. You want to make sure that it wasn't fed GMO corn. You know, it, it needs to have a good diet because you, it's not just you are what you eat, it's are what you eat ate. So, if you're eating, you know, something that somebody says is, oh, like, totally organic, uh, you know, free-range chickens or something like that, but then they are fed, you know, like, bottom-of-the-barrel kind of corn, then they're going to have bottom-of-the-barrel nutrition, and that's what's going to get passed on to you. Nutrition is accumulated as it goes up the food chain. So if you can get uh, nutrient-dense food for yourself and you can get nutrient-dense food for the animals that you eat, then you are going to be a lot better off. You know, local and wild, I think, are, are definitely um, better choices. If you can get local food, if you could get local non-organic uh, meat, it probably will be better than the organic meat you can get to the store um, just because of nutrient density. Um, the uh, organic meats at the store, they probably use some kind of loopholes uh, to get it certified organic. And, and it's kind of sad to say that, but it's true and, and you've got to be aware of it. So what about the rest? You know, I mentioned lots of different kinds of food. I have a picture of some seaweed here. And uh, seaweed's actually a form of protist. So they are uh, they're definitely something you should in include in your diet. And they need to be organic, you know, local, wild. They've got to be from a good source. You know, uh, it, it's very easy for me to stand here and say, you should eat this, you should eat this. But really, if you think about the best source possible, it's going to be the one that was closest to how it evolved. If you find lettuce that is close to its genetic predecessors, then it would actually be much more nutrient dense than lettuce that's been bred a lot. And that's the same with anything across the board, you know, animals, mushrooms, if you can find wild mushrooms, it's better than, uh, than finding local mushrooms. Uh, I mean, uh, finding mushrooms at the store, <clears throat> you know, a lot of the stuff again, bioaccumulates nutrients. So if you get mushrooms that were grown on sawdust or something like that, they're not going to be as nutrient dense as mushrooms that were grown on, you know, a log in a, a, a forest or something that actually would have had good nutrition itself. That's how you can find good sources of food. You know, it, it should be something you want to eat and then they should be eating something that they had evolved eating. So I do want to say, you know, make sure you eat some fermented foods. I got a picture of sauerkraut here, but <clears throat> this kind of comes back. So uh, hunter gatherers didn't eat quite as much fermented food. Yeah, they would have eaten some, but uh, we, uh, I want to take everything that you learn and apply it to modern day. So because we are not hunter gatherers, because we really are modernized, domesticated people, we should eat the way that our genes have evolved. So that definitely is a, uh, a really big bonus, you know, and fermented foods is such a, a vast category. You know, it, it can repopulate your gut, you know, it, it can do all kinds of things. And, uh, it truly really is one of the like superfoods, and I'll talk more about it in a different webinar. But it is a it is an emphasis that everybody needs to place inside of their diet. So <clears throat> don't worry. I know a lot of this seems confusing. I know it's all really complicated, and you know probably seems convoluted. But for the next couple weeks, like really, we will be going over how to find this food and how to implement your diet. So everything that we mentioned here can be found in your local grocer. You know, I, I do want to reassure you that if you live in New York City and you can't find a farmer's market around, that you really can still eat healthy. So understanding is, or what to eat is really 
a big step in your dietary needs. Like it's a step in the right direction. This is the hardest mountain to climb. So what's so important about educating is getting um, yourself to the point of understanding what your body wants. You know, not just saying, oh, I guess this person says I should eat this, so I should eat it. But it's actually understanding what you should eat. So that way you can do it on your own. You can figure it out and you can you can do it by yourself. So this is a... <clears throat> This is a, a Chinese proverb. It's one of my favorite quotes. The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is now. So uh, there are lots of excuses, and I've given them to myself before. You know, I, uh, I'm like the master of finding loopholes and, and doing what I think is not uh, uh, advantageous to me now, you know, trying to just put stuff off. But <clears throat> really, the best time to change your nutrition is now. You know, of course, it would have been better if you'd done it last year when you said you're going to do it, but you didn't do it last year. So you should do it now because this time next year, you're going to be so far ahead and uh, you'll really thank yourself. So, you know, again, learning is the first step. Uh, you know, congratulations. You know, you are, uh, you're definitely a rare breed if you learn about this, if you study it. Um, you know, the field of epigenetics is so new and so untalked about that not many people really understand it. <clears throat> it's, uh, it's very easy for it to be confusing and you are in the right place if uh, you wanted to learn about this. So you are really the top percent of people who learn about nutrition. Um, most people who learn about nutrition just like buy the latest health fad book and, you know, do all the stuff that uh, mainstream media says, you know, watching Oprah. You are truly the elite. You're in the top percent of people who, who study and learn about nutrition because you are in the right place. You know, if uh, you had to put everybody in a percentage base of uh, their nutrition knowledge, you are probably in the top 1% of people just just from learning this. You know, if you stay tuned for all of these webinars, like I will show you exactly what um, you should be doing and you will be even farther up in your list. Uh, you'll be a higher, higher percent, 99.9% .9 of people. You'll be in the very tippy top because I have had a lot of trouble trying to find this kind of information and it's because a lot of people don't know about it and I want to bring it to you. I want you to understand. I want you to know that you can eat, you know, vegetables and you can eat the meats and you know, you, you can learn about it yourself. You know, you can control your own destiny and I'll be here to help you. So, you know, please don't forget, use me as a resource. I am here to help. You know, the, the point of me doing all of this is to give you a resource so that you can learn the stuff on your own. You know, I wish that I had had something like this when I was starting to learn about nutrition. It was so difficult. There were so many things that I had trouble learning and doing. And I, uh, I really wish that there had been somebody out there providing so much information on the topic that is truly relevant to me and most people don't empower you but i want you to feel like you can make the change yourself so i want to remind you again to use this hashtag to ask me any questions any questions you've got about this topic you know um you know if you want to talk about it with everybody else use this hashtag rewild your health so like, again, I just want to say nutrition is awesome. I love nutrition. I study it. I talk about it in my free time. I'm sure my wife gets tired of it. Um, but it can really be the doorway to the life you want to live. You know, you can have the health you want. You can have the body you want and the energy you want. Everything gets better when you have better health. Um, and once you get it, it's not as confusing as it is at first glance. You know, once you understand how nutrition works, it's not all that complicated. There's just so much information out there that is not... Uh, completely correct. And again, everything is, is specific to you. And if you think that it can be cookie cutter for everybody, you know, that's not true. And so it seems really confusing, but once you get it, it's no longer that way. So <laughs> until you get your nutrition right, nothing is going to change. You know, it's also the truth in the field of health. Until you you get your health right, nothing is going to change. And that's true. You know, it, it helps you in every aspect of your life. So this is the right place to start to change your nutrition. You are in the right place. So, you know, don't worry. Uh, I know this still seems daunting. And I know it can. It really was for me in the beginning. So 
please make sure you tune in for all of these free webinars. Make sure you go watch the replay of uh, last week's webinar and you will be in the top percent of educated people in this field. Um, you know, seek out the foods that you learned about today. You know, all of the stuff that I talked about, local foods, go find local foods. Um, uh, if everybody wants one thing to do, I want you to find your local farmer's market. I want you to find your local butcher and just try to get meat, you know, try to get some vegetables from it. You know, it, it doesn't have to be complicated, but just find it, go there and try it you will definitely notice a difference in flavor. You'll notice a difference in how you feel from eating that way. So please ask me questions. You know, it, it, it really is daunting, but um, I will totally be happy to answer, you know, but really things are confusing, you know, like it, it can seem very convoluted. Uh, you can put in the time and study everything that you can get your hands on, you know, that way that's the route I took. You know, you can try to take that route as well. Um, you can wade through all of these false promises and diet fads that are out there to find something that works specifically for you. Or you can tap into my years of research, like years, literally years of studying this and trying to figure it out for myself. And I'm trying to bring it to you now. I want you to understand. Um, but you can tap into this years of investigating and you can quickly and easily get your specific meal plan, you know, your specific health plan with no headaches and no confusion. You know, I will lay it out for you so that you can do it by yourself. The fastest path to the health you want is through re rewild your health. So everything should be made as simple as possible, but not simpler. You know, it's a quote by Albert Einstein, and this is definitely true in nutrition. If things seem really complicated, it's probably not uh, the best way to go about it. Things should be simple, um, but they shouldn't be any simpler than they need to be. So what is Rewild Your Health? Rewild Your Health is the complete step-by-step -step program to correct, balance, and maximize your nutrition. It is the absolute fastest way to get from point A to point B. You know, I, I say it's step-by-step, -step, and that means that each step is laid out for you, like right in front of you, like the yellow brick road. Um, there is no confusion. There's no misunderstanding. Uh, you will get, uh, when you get to the end, you will have a plan specific to you and your goals and, and you make it yourself. You know, it will be truly your own goal and uh, your own plan and it won't work for anybody else. It will work only for you. So it's the difference between getting there in car on the left where you don't even know if it's going to start. You don't know what's going to happen. You just kind of hope it goes and getting there in the new, uh, Tesla model three you know, the most efficient way that you can get there, the smoothest, quickest way that you can get there. That's really the difference in doing it on your own and, uh, you know, letting me help you and tapping into my information and my knowledge. So what is Rewild Your Health exactly? It is a 12 module course and it starts where your diet is now and gets into your diet goals. So your, your specific diet does not have to be at a specific benchmark. You know, most diets that I've looked at, they assume you do one thing or the other and, you know, they say you need to be eating like this, but no, this meets you exactly where you are. If you're sitting on the couch and ordering pizza every day, this diet or this, this course starts right there where you are. Like you can pick it up from there and go, or on the other end of the spectrum, you could be the most elite Spartan racer in the world and you can use this course to get your nutrition to the next level. Um, you can use it to 10x the results that you want. There is no ambiguity. Everything is laid out. It is simple to understand. It is intuitive. It is not super complicated. Um, again, like this is easy for you to do by yourself. It is exactly the path that I have honed over the course of years, more than 10,000 hours of study and ongoing study. You know, again, I'm going to be updating this with everything that I learn about. You know, if I learn um, something that drastically changes everything, then I will show you, you know, I've spent probably more than 10,000, probably like 20,000, 30,000 hours just, just learning about this stuff, you know, contemplating it and trying to piece it all together. Um, so module one, what does health even mean? It's the internal and external factors that can change your health. So you will go much farther in depth about this topic than we did in the last section. You'll discover how all of these factors can be your downfall or you can make them your strength and how to start your personalized health plan. Module two is what should you feed a human in the zoo? Uh, how you should eat and what your genes are telling you. You know, this is what we talked about today and you'll find out how humans evolved to eat and it'll, it'll <laughs> really surprise you. You know, I go 
I go very in depth about this, you know, um, it's so complicated and I just lay it out for you in, in an easy way and way that you can understand um, how diets can different or can cause different levels of health. So I'll show you how to become the healthiest that you can, you know, the, the, the best way for you to reach your goals and uh, I'll show you how to do it. So how to apply these lessons to modern day life. A lot of them say that you need to eat a certain way because we evolved that way, but it doesn't actually show you how to do it. I want to show you how you can do it with your family. How you can do it with your kids, your spouse. Like I can show you how to apply it to modern day life. <laughs> Uh, module three is the easy way to find plants. It's the steps to sourcing the best food in the world. Um, you'll learn why sourcing your food can automatically create the life you want. You know, it, it does it without you even thinking. You get specific instructions on how and where to find this food and to find it cheaply. That's the key. Most people think that the, the food is going to cost you a lot. And uh, of course, compared to box food, it'll be a little more, but I'll show you how you can get it cheaply. This includes more than plants. You know, it includes all of the kingdoms of life um, and, and bacteria, fungi, and protists are really the superfoods that you never hear about. So module four is the easier way to find meat, the process of acquiring better meat for less money. Uh, learn what is important about finding quality meat, where should the emphasis of your money be placed, and how you can relieve the burden placed on your wallet. You know, this is a really big hitter uh, for me because it is... Uh, it's very difficult to find good quality mood or good quality meat for less money than uh, than you're used to spending. But there are ways that you can do it. So, <clears throat> module five, you raise your sources to the next level. It's the five steps you need to get the quality you deserve. Uh, learn these five steps to getting way better food than you can from the store. And like no one tells you this. No one tells you about how to raise your sources to the next level. Um, you can save even more money doing this. Like this is literally the easy way of doing it and nobody talks about it. So module six is level up your life. It's the five and a half, yeah, it's a half foods that will cause change in your life. These are the true superfoods that only the top nutritionists even know about. Just this section can give you the life you want. The extra half is the cherry on top and includes the best way to get the most nutrition from your food. This uh, this section really um, by itself could drastically change your nutrition. It could provide you know almost everything that you needed, and uh, it's definitely a, uh, a a nugget of gold in this whole uh, course. So number seven is the number twenty three. Why this number makes you do everything. You know, I'll let you in a little secret. It's about your genes. If you didn't gather that from this webinar, then your genes really have a lot to say about your nutrition and your lifestyle. Uh, you'll discover information on the cutting edge of the field of nutrigenomics. You know, probably something you've never heard of. Nutrigenomics is the study of how your diet's affected by your genes. Learn why your DNA is set in stone, but your genes can change throughout your, your life. You know, they can change daily. You can change them yourself. Uh, module number eight, the cake is a lie. Why you slip up and why it's okay. Okay, yes, I stole this from Portal for all of you nerds out there. I'm one too. Uh, understand how to deal with stress and setbacks. It's the psychology of eating. You know, this is this is really digging into your psyche and understanding why you do stuff and how you can circumvent it. Learn why you can cheat. I don't like the word cheat, so I put it in quotes there, but why you can cheat and how you can stay on track. And you can create your mindset to achieve your goals. You know, this can help in all aspects of your life. This isn't just specific to nutrition. Of course it applies here, but it's not specific to it. Module number nine is the nutrition of water. How just this one thing can make 99% of your molecules. So yeah, it's true. You're 70% water by volume, but you are 99.9% .9 water by molecule. Like you are water and, uh, it's really strange to think about, but you are made. 99% of you is made from water. So learn how you uh, you can be made from the pure substance on earth. So the, the most pure substance that you can find that uh, has not been on the surface of the earth since, you know, agriculture started. 10,000 years, there's water that is just now making it to the surface of the earth. And you can learn how to be made from this. 99% of your body can be made from this pure, pure substance. 
I mean, you won't get this anywhere else. You can learn that not all water is created equal. You know, you source your lot water like you would your food. You don't want bad quality water because then you're going to be made of bad quality water. You want the best quality you can get. Module number 10 is what goes beyond nutrition. It's the seven techniques to getting more out of your food. Why these seven techniques should be taught as a kid, they make all the difference for your food. Mastered the art of eating and cooking just from watching me. Like, I can literally show you these, and this will transform how much nutrition you get from your food. It's, it's actually kind of crazy. Uh, module number 11 is your specialized health plan, the plan that best fits your life made by you. You know, I want you to become the architect of your health. By this point, you will have made your own personalized health plan. And you will have done it all by yourself. This takes into account everything from your goals to your genes. And I will show you how you can do this, how you can master your um, health and how you can make this plan. And that way you can do it by yourself in the future. You don't need my help. So module number 12 is now that you know everything, what next? How your knowledge can expand and where to go from here. You will not need my help to make nutrition decisions. You'll be as much of an expert as I am. Uh, this is where you can go to keep learning. If you want to be like me and learn about nutrition all the time, this is where you can go to learn about that. Um, you'll learn tactics for telling whether information you come across is true for you or not. You know, it, it's irrelevant whether it's true overall because it doesn't apply. You know, you are your own specific case. You're an N of one. So it, it's you can tell whether it applies to you or not. And I'll show you how you can how you can vet it to see if that's true. So how much will it cost me? You know, you could spend 10,000 hours or more learning and deciphering like I did. You can hire a personal coach for, shoot, probably even more than $15,000. But um, you will get all of this information, you know, not even for thousands upon thousands to try to find something that works. You, you, you could pay that and... Uh, you know, I, I wish that I had known about all of this so that I didn't have to go through everything. You know, and it won't cost you thousands. I'm giving everyone a pre-launch discount. So just from watching this and hanging in here with me, you'll pay half of the launch price. You can get started for just $250. Like literally that's all. It, it's going to go up when I launch and it's going to go up after I launch. Just, uh, I, I want to help you out now. I want you to be able to get in there and figure it out for yourself. So I want to reemphasize what you get with this. You know, I'm going to bring it back in here. So everybody who's out there checking email and stuff, I want you to bring it back in. So you get absolutely everything in this course. I don't want you to think you only get like partial access. You get everything. I want you to have as many resources as possible. So what you get with this is your very own copy of your health plan. You know, the one that you made by yourself. You'll get your copy of that. You'll get the food journal that you can keep to uh, actually write down the food and helps you, like we talked about in the last section, it helps you determine what you're eating that's good and bad. Um, you get a recipe book and it has pictures in it and you'll get your course book. You get access to tons of videos. You get audio downloads, PDF video, and just way more downloads so that you can learn whenever you want to learn. You don't have to be online and do it all at once. So I'm throwing in some free bonuses here. You get access to an exclusive Facebook page and it is for you to have support and ask questions of me and I'll have weekly Q&A calls where I answer your questions that you post in this and questions that you email me that, that don't get answered throughout the week. Um, you'll have a course plan to help keep you on track. It's a, it, it'll help make you successful and I'll include the awesome tools kit. This is exactly what I use for making all of my food. This is exactly what I use personally. Plus, you get a 60-day money-back guarantee. So I want you to make sure that you have success with this. And if you don't, then there's a 60-day money-back guarantee. So this means that you get 12 epic modules for success. You get your personalized health plan, a food mood poop journal. You get a recipe book with pictures, a complete course book, tons of awesome videos. You get audio, video, and text downloads, exclusive Facebook page access. You get weekly Q&A calls for your questions, a course planner for your success, the awesome tools guide, a 60-day money-back guarantee, plus you get lifetime access to everything you see here. You get all of this for $250. So all you've got to do is visit course.rewildyourhealth.com slash presale. And, and literally, you know, this course is uh, everything that I've put together to help you get to your goals. You, uh, 
you don't have to worry anymore. You know, like I'll be there the whole time. You'll be able to ask my ask me questions, and this will go more in depth about stuff that we talk about here in the webinar. So again, um, you're getting the webinar special. You just go to course.rewildyourhealth.com/presale. So. <clears throat> so again, you know, thank you everybody for, for tuning in here. Um, I really want to help you get the health that you want that that you actually deserve. You know, I, I want you to be able to figure out for yourself what's healthy. I'm trying to present this information to you so that you can actually figure out which steps are applicable to you. That way you can actually get the results that you want. You know, it, it's not um, something that you can just have a, a cookie cutter um, uh, thing for everybody. You know, that doesn't work. You know, it didn't work for me. That's why all of these diets I tried, everything that says, like, if everybody did this, then everybody would be perfect. And it's not true. It never worked for me. And I want you to be able to be successful. I'm trying to set you up for success. I want you to be able to make your own health plan. That's why it's like, I want you to do it. I don't want to do it for you. I want you to be able to learn how to do it so that you can figure out what the best way to do it is. So if you change anything in the future, if something happens, if you learn um, about how your genes respond to something, you will know. You'll be able to do it all by yourself. Um, again, thank you for tuning in here. You know, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. I, uh, uh, I'll say that you should go follow me on Twitter and ask me questions there. I'll be able to um, reply to the, the questions that you've got. Thank you again for tuning in here and thanks to CrossFit Stanton for hosting this. You know, I hope you've been able to get a lot of value out of this. Um, I'm going to try to make sure that you continue getting lots of value and uh, I want to be able to help you on your way. So to get the best results out of all of this, go check out the replay of last week's video. You know, I'll, I'll make sure that you can watch this video too. Uh, the, the, the video for last week, it was at rewildyourhealth.com slash replay. So go check that out. Make sure you tune in every Saturday so that you can get all of the facts for everything. You know, you'll be in the top percent of people if you do that. You will, um, you will learn just tons. I'll be able to cover all the kinds of food that you eat. I'll be able to tell you how to make your food. I'll, I'll tell you, you know, everything. I'll try to impress all of my knowledge I've got to you so that you will be able to understand how to make your food. Um, and uh, hopefully I get to see you again on Saturday. If you've got any questions, remember to go ask me. Um, and uh, thank you again for tuning in. I'll see you all next week.